okay so recently i posted a video in which we told you that how to uh, test the brain stem functions by cranial nerve examination in a comatose patient so many of you requested that if we can demonstrate on a patient so we had a patient we got an opportunity to test on a patient who is comatose and he is on ventilator for the uh, patient safety we have uh, covered a towel on the patient face to disclose to not to disclose his identity now will demonstrate you how to test the brainstem functions but uh, let me tell you before doing this examination always test the gcs of the patient and always make sure the cervical spine is clear i am not purposefully telling you the what is the gcs of the patient so while you are seeing the video you are not biased whether the brainstem reflexes are present or not present in the end we'll tell you what is the gcs of the patient so sedation has been stopped and now we are we will start testing the brainstem function so what parts of brainstem uh, uh, are there so we have midbrain pons and medulla so four nerves so there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves so four nerves from the midbrain four nerves from the pons and four nerves from the medulla so out of these 12 we will be able to test only eight in a comatose patient we can only test the eight nerves the four nerves we are not going to test or we will not be able to test the first and second nerves are technically not the nerves they are the extension of the brain which are the olfactory and the optic but now for the sake of simplicity we'll see that four nerves are above the pons which is midbrain four nerves from the pons and four nerves below the pons medulla so we'll start by the uh, pupillary reflex so ol olfactory love we are not going to test because comatose patient can't tell you the what is the flavor or smell of the uh, object so we'll start by pupillary reflex so what we'll do we'll uh, put a light on the patient's eye and we'll see the pupillary reaction so what we are doing is when we are putting the light on the patient pupils the optic nerve is taking the signal through uh, uh, optic nerve to the midbrain where it is uh, getting uh, connected to pretectal nucleus and the Edinger Vasfal nucleus, and via the parasympathetic fibers of the third nerve, oculomotor nerve, it is constricting the pupil. So, essentially, what we are testing the second and third nerve, and the pa part of brainstem involved is midbrain. So, let's see. Brother, can you come here? So, this is the patient size. We'll see. You see the people's are pinpoint in size sort of and I don't see any reaction. Essentially there are no reaction. So we can assume um, very marginal sort of reactions. In the right eye it is not present. But if you see closely there is a slight slight reaction yes it is present you can see there is slight pupillary reaction present in the uh, in the left eye so it though the pupil is very pinpoint but there is a slight very slight sluggish reaction is present though in a very pinpoint pupil is very difficult to predict whether the pupillary reaction or not or not but uh, very slight reaction was present so it means that some portions of the midbrain is functioning because the uh, optic nerve has taken the signal, second nerve has taken the signal to brain, and from there the oculometer via the parasympathetic constricts the people. So some of you may feel that okay, uh, the reaction is present while seeing it. Some of you feel no, 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 I don't agree that this is not present. So we assume that it is not present. For us, it was slight sluggish reaction, but uh, those who don't want to uh, assume that it is reaction was not present make it a point that it is not present. So we have tested the second and third nerve in midbrain portion. So midbrain is not functioning well, if we are in dilemma. Now the second reflex which we are going to test is the cornea. In cornea what we will test with a cotton whisk, we will put uh, test the uh, cornea of the patient and then the eye should blink, both the eyes should blink. So what we are testing, the sensation from the cornea will be taken by the ophthalmic division of the fifth nerve. Where the fifth nerve will be there, so midbrain, 1, 2, 3, 4, pons, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we are testing the pons. So fifth nerve will take the signal uh, via the fifth, uh, 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 from the cornea and take to the pons. And from pons, the seventh nerve, facial nerve will come and give the signal to orbicular socially and it, it will blink the uh, eyelids. So essentially what we'll test in cornea, the fifth nerve and the seventh nerve and the area which we are testing is pons. 
can you give me a cotton okay so let's see both eyes are open because i don't see any blink can you open the uh, can you just uh, turn on the light you sure you see so i was closed open little camera should be ha uh, was so there i don't see any sign of corneal reflex so the eyes are not blinking so corneal reflex was not present so that means the fifth nerve carried the signal seventh nerve also carried the signal but there was no reaction that means pons is affected you know so we have assumed that uh, midbrain is not functioning if we, uh, we say that pupillary reaction was not present now the pons is also affected because the corneal reflex is also not present now the now what we are going to test is the dolsai phenomena and the cold calorie test so both these tests are known as one is oculocephalic reflex which is dolsai and uh, oculo vestibular reflex which is cold calorie test so both are same how this is carried out whenever you are turning the face of the patient to one side if the brain stem functions are present how the what which brain function should be present see whenever there is a uh, change in the semicircular canal so eighth now vestibulo cochlear nerves so cochlear part is for hearing we are not testing that vestibular part which is testing the balancing so semicircular canals get rotated so if we turn the face of patient to one side like this or like this like this the eye should come uh, back into the uh, this direction so this is dol side so what pathways involve eighth nerve stimulates the via the vestibular nerve the semicircular canals it takes to the pons 5 6 7 8 are from the pons to so eighth nerve in the pons then via two pathways it stimulates the sixth nerve which is your abducens and the third nerve which is the motor function of the oculomotor nerve so they bring the eyes back to this direction so what areas we are testing vestibular component of the um, it now means pons 5 6 7 8 then it takes to the pons and via the sixth and third so sixth means pons and third means midbrain so we have tested majority part of the pons and some part of the midbrain also make sure a cervical spine is uh, clear in this patient so we'll test the dol side so yeah you see the eyes didn't move again so you see the eyes are not moving eyes are remaining in the direction in which we have turned the patient so that means so that means the dol size is absent oculocephalic reflex is absent the cold calorie test is a much stronger stimulus uh, you can test that if dol size is absent you can test by cold calorie test also which is vestib uh, oculo vestibular reflex we are not going to test that but essentially we have tested the eighth sixth and third so that means pons and portion of midbrain is not working so till now we haven't got any sign of uh, midbrain functioning and pons functioning it means they, uh, there is an insult in the midbrain and pons for those who felt that some part of the people was reacting you can take consider midbrain is uh, intact or there is some component for but for the sake of simplicity of explaining we haven't till now got any sign from the midbrain and pons now now what so now uh, we'll test the gag reflex and the cough reflex so what is the pathway in gag reflex what we'll do is we'll stimulate the posterior pharyngeal wall so glossopharyngeal ninth nerve will take the signal and from the 10th nerve the uh, signal motor signal will come and patient will, as a sort of like vomiting sort of sensation and the other so ninth nerve will take to the uh, medulla and medulla the 10th nerve will uh, give the your uh, nauseating sort of or gag sort of signal movement of uvula and all those things so ninth is sensory part and 10th is uh, motor part so ninth is of medulla 10th is also medulla now other way is to test is if the patient is ventilator you can put the suction catheter and the patient will cough if the you test the carina the patient will cough so 10th nerve is involved if that is present that means medulla is present so we'll check we'll not test the gag reflex we'll take a straight away check the cough reflex this can you test so what we'll do ha huh. 
what we'll do is put the suction catheter deep down to the carina and patient should cock. So you see that the patient is coughing. We'll test one more time. We'll test one more time. Can you come here? Oh, okay, okay. Can you a little bit straight from here? Brother, can you test one more time? So we are testing. And you see, we are touching. Yes, so this, this is, you see the cough reflex is present. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So that means the signal from 10 nerve is intact, means the medulla is intact. So we didn't get any signs from the midbrain. We didn't get any signs of pons intact, but we get a sign from medulla. That means the brain stem's medullary part is functioning. And it is important. Why it is important? Because your respiratory centers are originating from the medulla also. So respiration is not gone for this patient. You may find some respiratory effects also on this patient. So essentially, this is the way to test the brainstem reflexes in a comatose patient. We didn't get any signs of midbrain. We didn't get any signs of pons, but we get a signs of medullary function intact. So this is how you should check all the reflexes. And make sure before checking this, you know you should know the GCS of the patient. Cervical spine should be clear. The so GCS of this patient is E1, VET, and M2. There is a uh, flexor, uh, sorry, extensor response in this patient. So. Now you go to the uh, video uh, which we have previously posted how uh, where there is a theoretical part of it and try to this uh, in all patients who are comatose. So you you just by visually seeing that oh people are not reacting and that there is no doll side, that doesn't mean that the brainstem is totally not functioning. We saw we saw this is a clear example that medullary part is functioning. So now go and read and I'll post you the link of that particular video in the description and thank you for watching.